Welcome back guys to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations We're up in the sky we now investigate a murder that Edgeworth has managed to somewhat prove his innocence of Now with Mr. Nero accompanying him he starts to investigate the crime scene To try and find out which of the first class other passengers might have been the perpetrator Well then, let's get started Where should we start from? Hmm, let's start with Mr. LeBlanc's statements the crime occurred between 6am and 6.15am. During that interval, the only person in the lounge was myself, which would make me the prime suspect. However, since I did not kill Mr. Hicks, it means that the killer was around somewhere. What clues point to where the killer could have been? If we had to believe what you say is true, then yes. Hmm. The first order of business will be to gather information to win your trust. Well, let's begin examining, and I guess you start with... The guy on the floor. What floors does this elevator service? Or not, really. We need the first and second. Although it can also go down to the cargo hold. However, that requires a flight crew keycard. So the only floors accessible to passengers are the first and second. Huh? Of course, it could be staff who did this too. Right, it's an elevator on the logic. I went to rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Well, there was a keycard on his body by the look of it. Was hanging off this lanyard. Something's missing from this picture. Now, if I could just put my finger on it. What is this sinister looking figure on the floor here? Oh, that's a piggy bank of our company mascot, Mr. Ifly. It's just one of the many pieces of merchandise we sell at our in flight shop. This bank is a limited edition and is so popular that we're down to our last one. You have an in flight shop? Yes, it's just beyond the lounge to the right. The shutter to the store is closed at the moment. But it was open the whole flight up until Mr. Hicks's body was discovered. There's blood on here. Could this have been the murder weapon? The blood on it is still fresh. Alright, it's logic, not evidence. This card? Money is strewn all over the floor of the elevator. I would guess it was all in Mr. Hicks's wallet at some point. Okay, we're not examining that. His wound, maybe? I don't anyone was expecting to find a dead body in an elevator on this flight. So Mr. Hicks, he's really... D dead? Yes. She's trembling, although I can't fault her for that when there's a corpse right there. Mr. Hicks, if you're really dead, then please answer yes. I see she's over the trembling now, although a new symptom seems to have appeared. Anyway, I should focus on the victim's body. Let's see. There's blood on the back of Mr. Hicks's head. Could this be the cause of death? He appears to have been struck very hard. A wound on the back of Hicks's head suggests blunt force trauma, but what caused it? Even his glasses are broken. Right, what else to examine? Can't examine the controls specifically. Something in his pocket? Hmm, there's something sticking out of his pocket. I hope you wouldn't mind if I take a look at what's inside. Hmm, it's a picture. It looks like it was taken inside a building somewhere. Photo of Mr. Hicks's data jotted down in my organizer. Oh, I can deduce now, can I? Just wondering what else to look at here. Yeah? I don't think we can really look at anything else. Could we deduce before, or am I imagining that? Let's look at the organizer. So we got this photo now. Something was, uh, oh! Okay, the photo. That's the important bit, right? So now we know what's missing. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Yes, it is. Mr. Hicks's machine is nowhere to be found. His machine? Um, <clears throat> his cell phone, Mr. Nero. Ah, uh, so I guess because it's not here, yes, I think we can safely deduce that the killer took it. Right, missing cell phone has been jotted down. Right, what else is there to look at here? We've, we've no longer got the deuce. That's still just money. 
And what else are we looking at here? We've lost the deduce. Is there anything else? I doubt anyone was expecting to find a dead body. Oh, it's just a dead body thing again. So his hands being open isn't a thing. I think we've looked at everything then. But I have to skip this to get out of here. Alright, well let's examine further around the room. There's some tongs. Ice tongs. And a bucket. Of course there's this exactly. I believe that the bronze statue knows not when good drink has been spilt at its feet. This is the statue of our founder, Mr. Hugo Ifly, who was a big fan of grape juice, was he now? I'm sure you'd be thrilled if he knew so much grape juice was here at his feet. Not a hint of hero worshipping, I detect. Can I check the stain? Okay, there's some spilled grape juice in front of the elevator. I assume it was spilled during the turbulence. Oh, we must clean that up or someone might get hurt. Aha! What's it, Mr. Edgeworth? I found some very important evidence. What is the important piece of evidence in this scene? Well, it's probably the footsteps moving away from everything. So that's the thing. Take that! Weirdly, I was trying to do that on top screen. I was wondering why my cursor wasn't there. What is it? They're a little smudged, but I think we can both agree that there are a set of footprints. So you think... Yes, these belong to our killer. Oh, then maybe we should check the shoe sizes of everyone in first class. I don't think that will be of any help to us. Unfortunately, the prints are too smudged, which will make it hard to get a definitive match. Oh, I see. I mean, it wasn't a terrible idea, though. Glasses and candles thrown into disarray by the turbulence. It's been a while since I've seen this big of a mess. It's terribly embarrassing, but I thought it was an earthquake for a second. And I frantically started searching for gas valves to shut off. I guess the shaking of the plane was bad enough to be mistaken for a real earthquake. But I would know since I was unconscious for most of it. I think that's what you need to question more. Stop over chair. Yet another victim of the turbulence. Ah, no! Look at all that grape juice standing in the back! It may not look it, but this chair was extremely valuable. It was. Yes, it was used when the rocket pals came to tour this plane. Rocker Pals leader sat in this very chair. I'm sorry, but what are these Rocker Pals? I can't believe you've never heard of them. They're all the rage. The Rocker Pals are an extremely popular international band. They added the Pals part as they become more popular, especially among teens. Oh, that explains it. I'm not really one for the music today. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe about them later. On second thought, I can already see how confusing the conversation would get. I was looking more at the stain, to be honest. What or who is this? This is a bronze statue of the founder of iFly. iFly's Mr. Hugo iFly. The one on the left is of when he was in his 40s and the other is of him in his 80s. Did the man actually aged in the span of four decades? Maybe I need to squint more. I was trying to look at the tongs, man. These counter windows offer a glimpse of the sky, but these clouds, they tell me nothing. Mr. Edgeworth, you look like you're talking to the clouds. That's so. Uh, then tell me, what do you suppose I said to them? I don't know, but it looked like a rather one-sided conversation. The clouds, they tell me nothing. And they do not. These bottles and glasses must have been broken by the turbulence. There's quite a bit of broken glass here. Please be careful when passing through the area. Thank you very much for the warning, Mr. Edgeworth. However, no matter how kind you are towards me, know that it does not clear up any suspicions I have about you. I, I wasn't warning you for the sake of clearing my name. What's this over here? This door leads to the flight attendant's room, but please understand that it's off limits to unauthorized personnel. This room is giving off the scent of women's perfume. One would think that perfume would smell great, however to me it simply smells. Well, not I have any interest in what lies behind this door. Perhaps we should return to the investigation, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? Sorry, I spaced out for a second there. Big piano. This grand piano is the pride of this plane. It can play the music of whatever CD we insert into a CD drive. That's not a piano. It's more like an overgrown music box. Ah, but it's keys to press along with the music as though there really is someone playing it. Some people have entirely too much money to waste on overly complex toys. It's very, uh, thingy. So what are we doing? We found a bit here. We found a bit there. I guess we might have to head into our... Logic bank here? 
Where was the killer? Well, the killer might have gone to the right. What's to the right? Broken glasses, spill thing. What caused blunt force trauma? This could be the murder weapon. Let's join those two up. In our pool of logic things. Statue of blood on it, lying next to the body of a man who was beaten to death. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, I think I figured something out. Y yes, what is it? The way the blood is on this, it looks like it matches up with the wound on his head. Well, aren't we deserving of the master of the obvious title? Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Don't you think that's worth investigating? Hmm, it would appear that this figurine is our murder weapon. Oh, I just knew it. I mean, I can't think of any other connection. Hmm, perhaps the master of the oblivious would be more befitting. Maybe. Mr. iFly Piggy Bank data has been updated. Is there more to link here? Well, are the broken glasses are spilled grape juice, I think. Probably not, but where was the killer? What clues point to where the killer could have been in the elevator? The victim's body was found inside it. Well, the killer had to have been inside the elevator at one point in time, for he walked out of the elevator and to the right. I mean, if you walked to the left, we'd have got the steps to the left, so it seems that that would be the direction that he came from. Let's link those up. True, there wasn't anyone else in the lounge other than myself right before the turbulence, so I didn't even think about that. But if the killer was in the elevator along with the victim, then that's a different story. If only you could prove it, though. If only I could prove that the killer rode the elevator of Hicks. I mean, didn't I just say that because of the grape juice at the door, that's what proves that he exited that way? I mean, we're narrowing them down. We got more logic from our logic, too. I have it! I'm sorry, but I don't understand, Mr. Edgeworth. I can prove that someone other than myself was here around the time of the murder. What? R really? Yes, it's rather simple, actually. The proof is in the pudding, or rather the grape juice in this case. These footsteps here confess to me this very fact, that someone exited the elevator alive. Seeing as how the victim is dead, that would mean a second person. But could the footprints be from Mr. Hicks himself? Ah, but if you take a look at our victim's shoes, you can see the soles are spotless. Which means Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in the elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. But there was actually one other person inside the elevator. So grape juice footprints have been updated, we were correct. Oh, that's the investigation complete. So I actually did look at everything. Hmm. What's going on over there? LeBlanc and the translator lady. Unforgivable! This is unforgivable! Do you understand what I'm saying? The movie is late! It is the same level of bad as if the plane arrived late. Um, but the movie... What? I will not talk to you anymore. You are just wasting my time. What is the matter, Mr. LeBlanc? If there was no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not tell me what to do. I need not to sit down. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove your innocence yet? If you would like, I will prove my innocence to you right now. What? Nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken, merely that there is room for doubt. I'd be most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine, suit yourself! Don't point at me like you're finger gunning. That's a weirdly aggressive expression. I'm certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the 6 and the 12. The body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes? Then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal! Mr. LeBlanc's conclusions seem to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the supposed time of the murder was me. So, my eyewitness testimony. If you think you can destroy it, then come. Let me see. Hurry! Do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? Why is he so irritated? I'm the one accused of murder here. Anyway, I must find a way to discredit Mr. LeBlanc's account somehow, and fast. I think this lies in times. Why hasn't the movie started? 
I'm certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator. Hold it. You are, we're not down there. Mr. Blanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at that time? Of course, I saw what was inside. And you were sure that the victim was in the elevator alone? Yes, the only person inside was that Mr. Hicks man. Hmm, this last outfit is a bit too important to let go. So the only person inside was that Mr. Hicks man. So this is the one that's too important to let go. It's added dialogue by the sound of it. So we usually go right at that. Looks like footprints are something being dragged. It hints at the fact that there is, was definitely more than two people in there because the grape, grape juice footprints. So that. Objection. Mr. LeBlanc. What is it? There's a very glaring contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a look at the area in front of the elevator. There, at the spilled grape juice. Yes, Anne? Will you admit you also spilled it with the blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But the interesting thing here is a set of grape juice footprints. F footprints Yes, the ones that lead from within the elevator out into the lounge itself. It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hicks exited the elevator alive. Ugh! There must have been another person in the elevator with Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games. Why don't you tell us the truth? Can you please translate for us? Um... No way, that's totally impossible. I guess is what he said. No way, that is totally impossible. I know there was no other person in there. I saw my own eyes. If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose she's right. He doesn't seem to be lying. But then what does it mean? But what about this contradiction? Mr. LeBlanc, please just once more, will you recall the details of what you witnessed for me? Ah! So what I saw... Part two. I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I was always checking the time over and over again. I happened to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me. And I saw clearly into the elevator he was entering. And I swear there was no one else inside. No one. Mr. the Blanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you two have issue with... Well, dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? Yes, missing some words does mess you up a bit. Ah, uh, no, no, not, not at all. Please forget I said anything. Yet again, he doesn't appear to be lying. I can't let this testimony stand as the truth. Why are you sweating so much, sir? You just really don't like being long that, wrong that much? I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. Hold it. Why? So, are you still upset now? I'm always upset. The only time I'm not is when I have a piece of art in my hands. It's surprisingly easy to believe that about him. But I was even more upset when Mr. Hicks walked by me. Why? I was always checking the time over and over again. Hold it. Why are you so attentive to the time? Because, because something unforgivable was happening. Hmm, come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was giving a complaint to the attendant about the movie starting time. Return back to me my time in money. You understand the point. Movie? Is he talking about the in-flight one that's mentioned in the magazine? Uh, summary of the plot and the start time. Interesting. So the movie is supposed to start at... 7. Assuming 6 is the line. Or between 6 and 7. 6 to 8, maybe. Which, if that's AM, should be now. They're supposed to show License to Love, Laugh, Maim and Murder. I can't see that movie in my country. You can only see it on international flights. I looked forward greatly to that movie. I checked my pocket watch whenever possible so I would not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. So my watch is not wrong. It matched the schedule. The movie was still late. Very, very late. Your pocket watch. I'd like to ask you a little more about it, if that's alright. 
movie I wanted to see would not start, so I checked my pocket watch many times. So I'm asking more about that. So this movie you mentioned is the one listed in the Sky magazine. Yes! I was so looking forward to watching License to Love, Laugh, Maim and Murder. Mr. Tenero, was this movie shown on this flight? Yes, it was shown at the scheduled time. Isn't it possible you simply stepped through it by accident? Nonsense! You doubt me? N no Now stop pointing at me like that! Odd, how do you miss a movie that he was clearly hoping to see? I took my pocket watch a great number of times, that much I know for sure. What? Does it list like a specific time? Departure time, not destination time. There we go. Job done! Oh, gone on it again. So we need to probably present that to this statement, which we're going past now. My watch is set to my destination's time. I always said it when I board the plane, but that's wrong. So is it this statement? Or the other statement? I mean, this one's mentioning destination time, and that's say basically saying he said it completely wrong. Which means, of course, the time that he's seen him in the elevator is completely wrong. It's probably this statement then, not the next statement. Well, if you fail, you can always go and try the other one. Objection! Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came on board. Now, if your watch has been set to our destination's time zone, it would mean that your watch is displaying the time of our destination. Yes, and the correct time is worth six cents. I would like to take a look at this. If you believe this Sky Magazine, clocks on this flight are run in accordance with the time of our departure time zone. Of course, the movie schedule was also created with that in mind. Mr. Nero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? Well, we made a short stop at a transfer point. That's right, it was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Zengfa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at that time. So right now, we are still running on Borginian time. What? The time difference between Borginia and our destination is nine hours. In that case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of sync with the schedule. Why would we play a movie at 7 a.m.? What? Further, with your analog watch set to our destination's time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight's onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. And you can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means you saw Mr. Hicks three hours prior at 3 a.m. We have a window or something? My one million cents! This should clear up all of the remaining accusations. So this basically winds the time frame for the time of death, right? Yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m. It means the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. The question now is, where was Mr. Hicks during that span of time? And what was he doing? Um, I've got something to say. And you are? Yeah, um, oh! I'm Cammy Meal. I'm a flight attendant. Um, what is it you wish to say? Well, I think your story is a little different from how I remember it. What do you mean, Cammy? I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know. What? How could he be so sure all the time? Oh, that's right. He pushed his call button while we were parked at the transfer point. Ah, the stop we made for refueling and cargo transfer in Zeng Far, correct? Yes, it was from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. according to our clocks. And during that time, did any of the passengers leave or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off or on in Zengfa. What about the flight crew? The few who were handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gone on or off. But eventually everyone, including Cammy and myself, came back on the plane. So basically I can assume that no one left or got on since our initial takeoff. Interesting, I should keep that in mind. Alright then, refueling is Zengfa, data jotted down in my organizer. I like her name is Mrs. Chamomile, so she's tired because she's drinking chamomile tea, which is meant to make you go to sleep, right? Or it's a good tea to drink before bedtime. It's chamomile. 
Yeah, and I answered his call. I can tell you Mr. Ackby Hicks was there in his seat when he took off again at 5am. Miss Mule's testimony is joy at them. Alright, then that puts the time of the murder between 5 and 6.15am. Okay, now what time did you come down to the lounge, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, I remember coming down here almost as soon as we left the Republic of Zheng Fa. Ah! You! You were here the whole time through five, yes? Then you were the only one who could be the killer. Mr. Edgeworth! Were you really here in this lounge the entire time from 5am onwards? Unfortunately, yes. Then how do we explain the footprints? Is that not obvious? This man waited for Mr. Hicks here in this lounge, waited to kill him! And then he put the corpse into the elevator! That is when the turbulence happened. My eyewitness testimony may have been mistaken, but what time I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator on the second floor does not matter, because the entire incident is concluded here in this lounge! Everything happened in this lounge? Is that what you really believe, Mr. LeBlanc? What? Do you have any other idea? I simply feel that there is something out of place in the scenario you presented. Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than this lounge? Um. <laughs> My prosecutor's badge! Right, picked up the floor in front of the elevator, there's but a passport inside. The body found at 615 inside the elevator, first floor was hit on the back of the head. Details, meals, movies, etc. Nothing that says time apart from the time of the movies, etc. Just looking at the five to six block would be when drinks are being served. Photo of Mr. Hicks. Don't think that helps. Cell phone's gone. Is there anything important here? Oh, I can actually check it. Is there something I haven't checked yet? I'll examine this. There's some blood on one of the corners. Could this piggy bank be the murder weapon? Well, we've already thought of that, but... Anything else to look at here? This is iFly Airlines. You know, I've seen it occur a lot recently, and it's been bothering me greatly. Why does nobody know how to properly capitalize and space nouns anymore? Like what, esports and stuff like that? I don't know! Um, I am kind of clueless. Grape juice. Oh! <laughs> there, I just spent time looking at the blue text. Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than this lounge is the point of question. The possible murder weapon came from the in-flight shop, usually found there. So, that could tie it to another location, and then having came up through here. Yeah, I think we've got it in the end. It might be that, because there's nothing else that really ties to a different location. That's the only one that mentions another location. Take that! The music didn't stop. The murder weapon. This little piggy bank is sold at the in-flight shop. It is sold there and only there and is not displayed here in this lounge. How then did it find its way here? Don't you find that a tiny bit suspicious? Okay, I'm correct. Hmm, such a trivial point. It only means you prepared it, taking it from the shop first before coming here, that's fair. It doesn't prove you are innocent at all. Ah. Is there no way to win with this man? If I may, what is it? Um, you see, well, it's just as Mr. Edgeworth says. Oh, and why do you know this so well? Well, it's just that that piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. And when was this? It was maybe around 5.40 a.m.? Isn't that just before we hit that patch of turbulence? Th that's right. You were in the shop just before the turbulence? Um... Yes, I was. Come to think of it. Mr. Nero, when I found the body, I believe you came out of that door. Yes, I did. And what is beyond that door? That's the flight attendant's room. But then, you're on the first floor? 
Yes. I had to do something at the shop and in the flight attendant's room. So I went to the shop first and then to the flight attendant's room. Are you saying you passed by me at some point? Yes, you seem really into the issue of Sky Magazine you were reading at the time. I don't suppose you noticed me walking by. Hmm. I vaguely recall someone walking by, but I didn't take notice who it was. Anyway, the piggy bank was definitely there at the shop when I went there. Why did you go to the shop in the first place? I went there for a work-related matter. Work, you say? Yes, the upkeep of the shop is also one of my responsibilities. Why do you not say anything about that until now is what I want to know. In any case, I believe it's clear that the shop needs to be investigated as well. Shall we head over there then? What is it now? Well, why am I not allowed to go to the shop? Is a strong question right now. What is the problem, Melis? Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Rhoda? Don't you need the captain's permission to check the shop? No, I haven't forgotten. But I have already asked him for permission to search the entire plane. So I think we're alright. Huh, that's weird. What is? Well, I just talked to the captain, see? And he said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Nero? It means she's lying. Go on, admit that you are. You said that you had permission to search all over, but you don't, and yet here you are. You, flight attendant! What are you trying to do? Pull the sheep over us? The captain's calling for you, Miss Rhoda. Oh, but don't worry. I already got permission to search the shop from the captain. See, unlike you, I do things the right way. Mr. Nero, why would you do such a thing? Please excuse me. Looks like I get to be in charge now. Please go back to your seat, Mr. LeBlanc. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth. If you would follow me, I will be your guide from now on. There's something about Mr. Nero that has piqued my curiosity. But right now, investigating the in-fly shop is my top priority. And so we move on to explore a different area then, with Miss Tenero somehow having lied, not having visited the captain. What is her angle? We know she had access to the crime scene now. Could it be her? Or could it be someone else standing in this room right now? We'll find out, maybe next time, or we'll at least get closer to the truth. I'm Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations. I'll see you guys then for more. Bye-bye.